All right. I don't know if you guys can see, I got a broken torsion and a torn slide out fabric on this Allegro Red. So I'm just gonna do this real fast. And it'll be one less thing to have, I have to do. Sure wish I had body work done though. Well, I'm sure my good friend wishes he had a uh, nice big platform to sit up here through an awning like this. So you can see this awning's been torn. Torsion assembly's been broken right there. And of course the arm hard hardware is missing. And it may be difficult to see, but you can see how much is sticking out right here. Uh, and how much is not sticking out right there. This little arm right here is supposed to be engaging with that lock right there. So they made these pretty tight. I'm sure this one's gonna be really close to that one. The first thing I have to do is lock this in place because this one still is under tension even though that torsion is not. So I'm going to go ahead, unwind it, take the uh, pin the torsion, and then that way I can uh, take the fabric off. Now it's going to be very difficult to see. I unwound this by hand, but there's a pin going through the shaft right there into the cap. So it's under tension now. You can kind of see where the hole would have been on that shaft if I focus. Focus right there. That part's broke off. That's why it's broken, because somebody twisted it, hit something on it. Now, from what I can see, this spring is still under tension in there. So I'm gonna have to dangerously do something that I don't wanna do. So let me do that first while you guys don't look. Okay, well, that wasn't too scary. I just, it's weird. Looks like there's steam coming out of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so all I did was uh, break that rivet that was barely holding on right there using a hammer and a putty knife. My favorite tools. All right. So let's go ahead and rebuild this torsion. We do that. Now I should have the fabric removed. Let me go ahead and remove the fabric first. It's a shame, I knew, it's just a tiny little bit. Okay, I'll have to uh, straighten that out a little bit. Get those uh, rivets out of there a little bit. There, that wasn't so bad. Let's try my second favorite tool. My little uh, mini crescent wrench. All right, we're gonna call that round enough. So the next step is gonna be the torsion. I know the age old question is, why am I not just replacing this entire topper? And the question, the answer is I'm just stubborn. I have a uh, old torsion, it's the wrong size, but this spring is still fine. Uh, that cap part is bad. So I'll just take this cap off, paint it, and then I have the right torsion. And then I also have the uh, arm so it's going to be a lot cheaper for me to just uh, replace the fabric because I have universal fabric anyways and this isn't a very long one so most of these parts I do have on hand it's just going to be time and effort and that way I didn't have to order a special length one I don't know if it's the right answer it's just the answer I'm giving you guys All right, guys, you were paying attention how that came out, right? Somebody was, right? That stays right there. I just have to do the same thing with this one. If you guys can see, this is the left-handed, and this is the right-handed. So it just won't wind up right, or left, I guess you could say. So that's why I have to put this one on that one. And I just have to paint that. That's simple. Black paint is black paint. Okay, look at that. I just had to bolt it on. All right, so now I just go paint it, and then while this it's curing, I measure out and cut the fabric. Hi, right, it's a good plan. All right, it's all cleaned up. 
have high tech uh, gloss black. Hopefully this works. And no, it still hasn't been painted. Let that cure. Here's my scrap roll. Yeah. Ah, yeah, we'll be good. And yes, I cleaned off the concrete. There's no rocks underneath there. All right, so I just have to cut it right down this line right there. Got my nice new rigid blade. We'll make that happen now. All right, so that's done. Get that out of there. Let's go back up on top. Right, so we're just gonna be feeding it on. I'm gonna widen up this track a little bit. Should feed on pretty well. It's gonna go on right there. Now, although I don't have uh, silicone spray, I do have glass cleaner, which is soapy and that'll be a nice lubricant. It's foamy and it won't leave any sort of residue. So it's kind of a win-win, right? All I have to do is make sure that the hem side is facing inside the tube or downway. And uh, we'll put it on there. Now it decided to be cold for some reason in the middle of March. So this fabric's a little bit uh, unruly to deal with. So I just have to work one side, then the other side, one side, then the other side. And then before you know it, I'll be at the end. And the hope is, once you get it far enough, it can go support itself, right? Almost there. All right, that wasn't so bad. Ah, I'm stuck. So, got about two fingers there. And, I don't know, I'll call it one finger. So I think go back just a little bit. Okay, so that part's fine. Now I just gotta get the torsion, put it back in there. Rivet it on, put some tension on it. All right, so don't forget to put the little uh, adapter on that spring before you put it in. All right. And of course, the slot in the cap needs to make sure you're on here so that way you can replace the fabric down the road, you know, because you're gonna have to five times in its lifetime. It's good design, good design. So let me just go ahead and put it on, rivet it on, and then uh, we'll add some tension. All right, so I think it just takes 3 16 rivets. I got my rivet gun set up for that. Uh, I'm not saying I'm in love with this thing, but... I'm not saying I'm not in love with it. to go yeah all right so I'm not going to show you guys how to add tension to this because I don't want you to be responsible or me to be responsible just remember that it'll away from the top of the coach, kind of just like an awning or a patio awning. So I'll be spinning that. And since it's all the way out, I'll have to add a little bit more turns to it. Then I have to pin it just like it's pinned over there. And I think, hopefully, I got my backup pin right there. Let me do that. All right, that's pinned in there. Now I should be able to release this, which I did. I can get all this out of the way. I already have the arm in there. All it takes is a little cotter pin that uh, connects that hole in that shaft to the arm right here. So in my bag, I have cotter pins. So I'll just slid that on that bracket right there. I should just engage. It's right about there. 
went too far. All right, I think I got it in place. Look at that. It's installed. Now I just have to uh, make sure that we're on a B. So I'm going to just center this thing back up again before I pull the pin because it'll be easier to move the fabric on the rail up there. All right, I think I pretty much have it where it wants to be. It's going to be close because this one's actually back a little too far, but this one needs to line up right with that. So let me just tighten up the uh, screws underneath. That kind of locks the arm in place where it's supposed to be. Oh, I need that. All right, with both those arms locked into place, now I just have to uh, pull this pin and then the other one. And uh, it's going to be hard holding the camera. There's two of these, so I'll just have to do the other one. Okay, so now I just let, now I just have to let go. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. I'll straighten out the uh, edge right there, and of course, we're supposed to run the slide in and out a few times. But I also still have to uh, put the lock arm on. So let me put the lock arm on. Say so I have to run the room in, and make sure I know where the lock arm goes. All right, so the engine has to be running, batteries have to be on, park brake has to be on. And I guess we can turn on some lights so we can see something, right? Lights. Uh, hall. Bedroom, there we go, I found it eventually. All right, so let me go ahead and bring this in. The uh, droid looking slide button and then retract. Okay, let's see how we did, huh? Well, I'd say it cleared, barely. Now I'm calling this a lock arm, but it's really not a lock arm, it's an anti billow arm. It's designed to um, basically interact with uh, that stop right there. So we don't actually want it to hit it, but if it was driving down the road and wind came and billowed and pulled this thing up, the tube would turn and then it would uh, stop against there. So it couldn't unwind anymore or it couldn't billow. So that's the idea behind the anti-billow. So it's actually gonna be sticking out right about there because we want to make sure that as it rotates around it's still going to clear we don't we wouldn't want to put it there because it would hit so usually about one o'clock is the right position somewhere around there all right so right about that position is the position i would like so let me go ahead and put a couple screws in and we'll rotate it around okay with that installed now you can see if the wind were to try to unfurl this it would come around and hit right there and this arm would keep it from moving anymore. That's the whole purpose of that arm. But we also make sure, need to make sure that as the slide opens up, this doesn't engage. So we have to do one more check to do that. Go out with it again. So if I go to extend it and I see it binding up at the top, that means it's engaged. I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and retract this now. Nice, and yeah, that is an awful lot of generator parts. I have one more part that I know I need before I can start that generator. That is, of course, the uh, cast aluminum base the whole thing sits on, since that's broken. I mean, I can't do anything. I'm not even worth trying to rebuild it if I can't start, put, the, put it on its base. Hopefully, I'll have a video on rebuilding an Onan, and hopefully, it works. All right, guys, well, that was an unintentional video I made in repairing this uh, Dometic, uh, Dometic slide-out topper. Now these torsions that are there, even though these arms are different than the normal hex shafts, the exact same torsion, it's just usually... Uh, 
on the hex shaft there's a uh, a roll pin that gets pressed in to keep it in place on the torsion but same same torsion Now I know some people might say I should have put a set screw in the rail right here, but I'd really like to run the room in and out a few times, but until the paintwork's done, I don't know if you guys can see, it's got a little bit of damage on this side here too. I don't want to lock everything in place and then find out something has to change. There was a replacing a non a Dometic uh, topper fabric torsion and uh, I guess we're building that slide out to a topper. It's gonna carry over to all the Dometic toppers. Not so much on the, the Carefree. Carefree likes to change theirs. Uh, seems like about every three or four years they come up with a whole new system. I don't know why they do that. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I really, 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 really hope this paintwork gets done. I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but 